All right, we're going to do lesson 65, which is prime factorization and factor trees. All right, every uh, whole number greater than 1 is either a composite number or a prime number. Okay, And what does that mean? A prime number is a number that cannot be divided. It's not composed of anything else. So if you take 7, for example, or 13, you can't take those numbers and divide them and get anything other than 1 and itself. Okay, So um, that's basically what prime and composite mean. Now, an example of a uh, composite number would be, let's say, 9. 9 is composed of both 3 and 3. Okay? Another composite number would be maybe 10. 10 is composed of 5 and 2, because it, you can take 5 times 2 and get 10. 3 times 3 equals 9. So there's a couple different ways to find the prime factorization of these numbers. So let's go ahead and do something like 125. This is the factor tree method. Factor tree. All right, so you look at the number 125. Um, let's divide it out. We can divide 125 into what two factors? Well, we know that. Since it has a 5, you can divide it by 5, which would be 25. Okay, So 5 is a prime number. You can't divide it down, and so we're going to go ahead and circle that. But you can divide 25. Okay, What two numbers make up 25? Well, 5 times 5. These two numbers, if you multiply them together, you get 25. So if you take all the circled numbers, which are all the prime numbers, and you write 5 times 5 times 5, you know that that equals what we started with, 125. This down here is prime factorization. Another way to write this would be in exponential form. Okay, So we're going to write an exponent, 5 to the third power equals 125 as well. Because we have 5, which is our base, and there's 3 5's, which is our exponent. Alrighty, let's go ahead and do a factor tree for 40. And this is number 4 on your homework. Let me make sure of that really fast. Um, yes, it says do a factor tree for 40. So we know that 40 ends in 0, so it's divisible by 10. So 40 divided by 10 is going to be 4. Okay. Now, neither 4 nor 10 are prime numbers, so we can break those down further. You can see they call it a tree because it has branches. It branches out. I guess it would be an upside-down tree because it's getting bigger this way. Okay? But anyway, 10 can be broken into 5 and 2. 5 times 2 is 10. So that mean, And both of these are prime numbers because you can't break them down further. Now, you can also break down 4. 4 is not prime. It's a composite number because it's composed of two smaller numbers that when you multiply these smaller numbers together, 2 times 2, you get the composite number of 4. Now, 2 and 2, of course, are prime numbers. Now, notice we have 1, 2, 3 2's. 2 times 2 times 2. And then we have 1, 5. And all that together equals 40. That's the prime factorization for 40. If you want to write this with an exponent, you can go 2 to the third power times 5 equals 40. OK, another way to find the prime factorization is division by primes. Um, and I haven't shown this uh, yet this year, so this will be new for you guys. So uh, number 19 on your homework says do division of primes and find for 50. Uh, so I've heard some people say this is a birth cake method, and I'll show you why. It's kind of cool. Anyway, so we're going to divide 50, and we're going to find its two factors, which will be on top and bottom. So I know that 50 is divisible by 5, and the answer will be 10. Kind of an ugly zero, sorry. And then 10, 
I'm going to divide 10, and that is 10. You can divide that by 5 as well and get 2. The reason why they call it the birth cake method is it kind of looks like a layered cake. Um, so I'm going to say 2, 5, and 5 are all prime numbers. So our prime factorization is going to be 5 times 5 times 2, and that's going to equal 50. Okay? If you want to write it with exponents, it would be 5 squared times 2, which also equals 50. Birth cake method, kind of cool. All right, um, number two on your homework, it says a rhinoceros is five and a half feet tall. Now imagine a rhinoceros is one foot tall. One foot would equal 12 inches. Imagine a rhinoceros was two feet tall. Well, you basically take two times 12, and that would be 24 inches. If it was 3 feet tall, you take 3 times 12, which would be 36 inches. Okay? So basically, we've got to take 5 and a half feet and multiply it by what? 12 inches, because every foot is another 12 inches. Okay? Some people can do this quick in their head. They can say, oh, 5 times 12 is 60, and I know that half of 12 is 6, so we can think of this as 60 plus 6. 5 times 12 is 60. And then half of 12 is 6. And that will be 66 inches. Another, other people may want to be they're more methodical. They want to uh, um, do this, uh, work this out, to show their work a little bit more. And I don't mind you doing that. 5 and a half feet. And I'm going to multiply this by 12. Okay? Well, I'm going to ch change both of these into fractions. This mixed number, you do the backward C, which I'm sure you remember from a couple lessons ago. Two t you take the denominator times the whole number. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 1. That's 11. And then the denominator stays the same. And then I'm going to multiply that by 12. How do I change a whole number to a fraction? Put it over 1. Okay. Then you can do some cross multiplication here, or cross canceling here. This will be 2 divided by 2 is 1. 12 divided by 2 is 6. 11 times 6 is 66. 1 times 1 is 1, which you really don't need. So that would be 66 inches. Hey, look. Same answer. All right, I really like this next problem. Um, what it is, is it applies math, it takes math and applies it to real life. Okay? So there's a carousel, and on the carousel, there's a, it has a radius of 15 feet. Okay? If someone is sitting right here and they may take one lap around, they go the distance all the way around, and wants to know how far they've traveled. Well, we know that distance around is, oh yeah, it's circumference. And our formula for circumference is C equals pi times the diameter. Cherry pie is delicious. That's one way people remember the formula for circumference. Okay, so. We're going to take C equals 3.14 times 15. 15 is not the diameter. 15 is the radius. Radius is only half of the diameter. So if you double the radius, then you'll have the diameter. The radius equals 15. The diameter equals 2 times, or doubling, the radius, which would equal 30 feet. Don't forget your feet. Okay? So I'm going to take 3.14 times 30. Okay? Nothing wrong with scratch work. I'm going to do some scratch work over here. I'm going to take 3.14. Usually put the harder number on top, the longer number, the number with more digits. And I'm going to multiply that by 30. Zero, I'm going to cancel out, just put a placeholder zero. 3 times 4 is 12, carry the 1. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4. 3 times 3 is 9. Okay? Now, um, I'm going to count how many places the decimal has been moved over on top. It's been moved over two places. So, the circumference is going to equal about 94 and 2 tenths of a foot. And then I just read the problem, and it says round to the nearest 
foot, so I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, 94 and 2 tenths rounds to 94 feet. So you're traveling about, you can do the about symbol. The circumference of that uh, carousel is 94, about 94 feet. 